David Posternock, Charlie McAvoy, Jeremy Swayman, the best players at each position for the Boston Bruins, and we're assessing where they're at heading into Game 3 against the Florida Panthers. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to beat. Today is Friday, May 10th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine, free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day, and today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. There's no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build your team. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. And Indeed, it is a Boston Bruins game day. Game three between the Black and Gold and the Florida Panthers going tonight in Boston. And it should be a must watch after how game two ended with most notably David Postnock and Matthew Kachuk dropping the gloves. We'll talk about that here in a moment. First, a quick reminder, you can find the podcast on social media at locked NHL Bruins, and you can find me, my dad jokes, hockey thoughts at Ian C. McLaren. Lifelong Bruins fan. I've been hosting this podcast for five years. Prior to that, I was a full-time uh, hockey news editor at The Score. been covering this team for various outlets for 20 years. And very rarely do you see Boston's top offensive player drop the gloves. Maybe not since Cam Neely was that really a thing. But it happened in Game 2 as David Pasternak dropped the gloves with Matthew Kachuk, who said that, it kind of started when Boston's bottom six guys were mixing it up. The Panthers didn't really like it on their side, and it kind of all started there. Kachuk said he kind of just asked Pasternak if he wanted to fight. He said, we'll do it next game. And Kachuk was like, I think we should do it right now. And lo and behold, the stars aligned, and they dropped the gloves. Kachuk said he gave Pasternak tons and tons of respect. Two guys that aren't known for fighting, but two guys know more for their offensive side of the game. Kachuk, probably known as a bit more of a tough guy than uh, Pasta, for better or worse. But they went at it. Kachuk called it a pretty cool moment and good for hockey. You know, these two teams, as Kachuk said, aren't there to play patty cake. They're uh, also... Trying to land some punches, trying to have some fun in the fight. You could argue that uh, Kachuk went a bit over the line by throwing a couple extra punches when Pasta was down on the ice, but um, Pasta stepped up for his team. He decided that somebody needed to step up to Kachuk, or at least try to shut him up, and Boston's best offensive player, their highest paid player, uh, tried to do just that. Now, if he had been hurt, uh, that would be not great. But he came out of it unscathed, and hopefully it will carry over to um, Game 3, where the Bruins will need much more of an offensive uh, boost and an emotional boost in terms of um, trying to get back on the winning side of of this series. Uh, Now, Jim Montgomery was not very happy at all with the extra couple shots that Matthew Kachuk took. Pat Maroon was talking this morning saying, uh, you know, Kachuk isn't going to fight him. He's going to go and challenge David Pasternak. All credit to him. He stepped up. He said he'd do anything for the Bruins. He's not afraid of Kachuk. But really, it shouldn't be happening where um, Pasta is the one uh, dropping the gloves 
with Matthew Kachuk. That's partly Kachuk choosing to go after or challenge um, Pasternak to a fight. Pat Maroon had already been chucked out because of uh, uh, misconduct. Pasta stepped up and Jim Montgomery again said that he was really proud of Pasta. That's what you like. You like your hockey players to be competitors. And David Pasternak is one of the elite players in the NHL. But he took it to a whole other level with that fight. And that should be some good motivation for his Boston Bruins teammates coming here here into Game 3. Their best player is willing to do anything for this team. Willing to drop the gloves and risk injury, which is, yeah, stupid. They'd have no chance without him. But willing to put it all on the line for his teammates. And uh, that's exactly what he did in that game to fight. Full credit to David Pasternak. And, and there's no measuring or no telling what kind of impact that will have on the rest of his teammates. Uh, it could very well be a springboard emotionally for the Bruins to uh, take back control of this series. After game six against the Maple Leafs, Jim Montgomery specifically said Pasta needs to step up. He did that offensively with a career highlight game seven overtime winning goal against the Maple Leafs. Um, he did it, of course, in game two by sacrificing himself for the good of the team. And as the Bruins were getting run out of the building, their best player on the big stage dropped the gloves. And um, while it wasn't a big play on the scoreboard, it certainly was a big moment for Pasta and for the Bruins. And hopefully that carries over to game three, which we will preview here later on in the podcast. Coming up, we're going to discuss Charlie McAvoy. He had a bit of a rough game in game two. Um, we'll discuss Jim Montgomery's take on how Boston's best defenseman is handling things here. Coming up as the podcast continues. Did you know that Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace? Saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. They give you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. Thousands of five stars review on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. Check out policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine, free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Speaking on YouTube, you can find the Locked On Sports Today 24 7 streaming channel with all the news, opinions, analysis you need from around the Locked On Sports universe. You can subscribe on Locked On Sports Today as well as on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. Game three between the Bruins and Panthers set for tonight. And one of the storylines from game two was Charlie McAvoy not at all looking like himself. Uh, he had th three giveaways. Uh, he was on the ice for three Panthers goals. Two of those goals he was right in the middle of the wrong end of that play. And uh, on the first one, uh, Florida took advantage of McAvoy losing his stick to take the lead in the second period. He wasn't able to defend properly, lost his stick, was hit into the glass, was cut. And then uh, he also got in the way on Florida's goal with uh, three, 0 0.3 seconds left in the second period as he screened. 
Jeremy Swayman. Uh, not his best game by any stretch. The the reactions on social media have been absolutely wild. There's people calling for McAvoy to be traded and, and then he can't be relied upon to be a top defenseman. Uh, that's rubbish. Charlie McAvoy is one of the best defensemen in the Maple Leafs. And Jim Montgomery told reporters on Thursday that, you know, McAvoy's been a horse for the Bruins in the playoffs. Did he have his best game on Wednesday night? No. But Montgomery said, quote, I don't think there was a Bruin, except maybe for Swayman, that had his best night last night. The fatigue factor is in. He's our biggest minute cruncher, and he will be ready on Friday, end quote. McAvoy, of course, is the clear leader in ice time, averaging 25 minutes and 40 seconds, over three minutes more than Hampus Lindholm. And it was a grueling seven-game series against the Toronto Maple Leafs, trying to shut down Austin Matthews when he was in, William Nylander was in, when he was in, Mitch Marner, John Tavares, etc. Um, going right from that game seven into the Panthers series took a toll. You could see everybody was kind of gassed and his play just hasn't measured up to being a number one defenseman so far. He's got a minus five over the last five games. Hasn't registered a point since game five against the Maple Leafs. The Bruins definitely need more out of him. They need him to get the puck out. They need him to get the puck towards the net. And I do think Charlie McAvoy has another level to hit here. And hopefully that will come as early as tonight. But as far as Jim Montgomery is concerned, he's been relying on him heavily and for good reason, and he will continue to do so. Now, when it comes to Jeremy Swayman, uh, it appears as though he will be the starter tonight against uh, the Florida Panthers. And this came after he was pulled in game two, not because of anything related to performance, but it was just a smart move to give him a bit of a reset. Um, Montgomery likely made that decision in an effort to give Swayman some rest before his next start, which will be tonight. Also just to save him mentally from having to close out that game and having to maybe get himself involved in some of these melees that were happening in um, towards the end of game two in the third period. Everybody is talking about how he's always so positive, how he's so level-headed, nothing can phase him, but everybody needs a bit of a break at some point he's been playing. He had never played this many games in a row, and, you know, it's inevitable that he wasn't going to maintain a 950 whatever save percentage. But he's also a guy who can uh, bounce back quite quickly and who can um, help this team win on any given night. And Jeremy Swayman was praised by head coach Jim Montgomery, who said he was terrific in that loss despite allowing four goals on 23 shots. And uh, the workload hasn't really affected him, but it did affect the team as a whole. They didn't have the juice, as Jim Montgomery said. And uh, that's why he decided to make that change, to maybe shake the guys up a little bit, to give Jeremy Swayman a bit of a mental reset. And based on... The expected lineup for tonight, Jeremy Swayman will be back in between the pipes, and rightly so. I mean, no disrespect to Linus Allmark. He has been playing, or he had been playing very well down the stretch. He's last year's Vesna Trophy winner, but this is clearly Jeremy Swayman's net. The only way you go to Allmark, I guess, is if uh, Swayman comes out tonight and is off and they have no choice but to switch him. For the time being, Swayman is the guy and likely will be moving forward as there's a distinct possibility that Linus Omark will be traded uh, this offseason. But of course, that is a topic for post-playoffs tonight. There's a big game three. 
and we're going to preview that one here as the podcast continues. There's no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. It's the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending multiple hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. We streamline hiring with powerful tools that find you matched candidates. And with Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed data. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offers good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. All right, full disclosure, I wasn't sure I was going to record a preview episode because I was meant to be on the road right now to Ottawa uh, to hang with my parents this weekend, to be with my mom, who is uh, going through a cancer treatment today. Uh, But one of our boys was up in the night sick and therefore we're not able to travel because of health considerations and not wanting to bring anything into their home. Big disappointment. And uh, again, happy Mother's Day to my mom. Shout out to all the moms or mother figures who listen to Locked On Boston Bruins. I do appreciate uh, your time and energy and support. And I guess I'll be watching the game tonight. There's also a game on Mother's Day. Uh, Good luck to us all trying to fit that in as well. Um, But yeah, shout out to mom. And... uh, no, you got this. Sorry, can't be there this weekend. All that to say, here we are previewing tonight's uh, game. And according to Fluto Shinzawa, the expected lineup is set. And there could be a couple changes here to the lineup. It appears as though up front, Jesper Bulkvist is out. Jacob Lauko in. Big fan of this move. Lauko certainly will be hungry after not playing for several games. Uh, and he's going to bring that energy that the Bruins need in the bottom six to keep up with uh, keep up with the Florida Panthers and to bring that physicality to keep them in their place and to um, yeah, maybe pop in uh, some some grapes before the game. Get that energy going. Maybe that will be a uh, a goal in there too for Lauko. Not expecting that, but whoever, whatever. On defense, there will be a change as well. Mason Lorai paired with Charlie McAvoy. Hamas Lindholm, Brandon Carlo, nothing new there. Physical third pairing though, Derek Forbort, who's come in and played very well for the Bruins so far, uh, will be paired with Andrew Peak, a Parkland, Florida native who is very much looking forward to uh, playing against his hometown um, Panthers in this game. Andrew Peak, according to Bell Fraser of the Hockey News, saying, quote, if you tell young me that one day I'd be playing against this team, I would have told you no. But being in this spot, playing for the Bruins, and having the honor is pretty special. Against your hometown team, it makes it even better. End quote. Andrew Peak has been very good for the Bruins after coming over from the Columbus Blue Jackets. He was injured early in the series against Toronto. Uh, having that very heavy physical third pairing should hopefully benefit the Bruins. They can get those defensive zone draws, uh, fight for the puck in the corners, win those board battles, get the puck out, and um, yeah, help the Bruins from the back end. Now, Pat Maroon will be in the lineup tonight. He said, according to Bell Fraser, that the Bruins should be pissed off, especially about game two. All the other stuff, whatever. The scrums yelling in our face after they score. uh, Referring specifically to Brandon Montour going at Brad Marchand, screaming in his face, doing the licking motion. It's over. 
It's done with. We've got to be mad here and play with intensity. I mentioned him talking about Matthew Kachuk earlier. Uh, he said, Kachuk's not going to fight me, Patrick Maroon. If I go out there, take a dumb penalty, and they get a power play, my job's not accomplished. Just got to take numbers. I didn't like how he hit him on the ground twice. I think that's dirty. So you can bet Patrick Maroon will be out there trying to send some messages. And again, it looks as though uh, it will be Jeremy Swayman getting the start, and rightfully so. Uh, it's been an up-and-down series. I was playing uh, softball last night, and a guy on my team said, the Bruins are one of the most confusing teams out there. Overall, they're 5-4 and four in the playoffs. Um, and, of course, we're up and down against the Leafs. They've been up and down here against the Panthers. Still have um, the fewest goals allowed among all playoff teams in terms of per game rates, 2.11, which is eighth, sorry, uh, which is first, the uh, Panthers are eighth, meaning get the puck on Sergei Bobrovsky. His save percentage in the playoffs is only 893. Jeremy Swayman's is 942. There's a clear advantage at play there. Uh, the Panthers are third in offense. They're not easy to shut down by any stretch, but it's certainly possible, and key will be keeping them off the power play. Don't take too many men penalties. Please do not allow uh, the power play to cook. Uh, the Bruins have the third-ranked penalty kill, a fifth-ranked power play. They have not yet uh, scored on the power play in the series, I believe. They really need to get on that. Special teams, always, always, always key in the playoffs. It should be an emotional affair. Uh, we'll see who the banner captain is. It's the 54th anniversary of Bobby Orr's uh, flying goal. Maybe he'll be waving the flag tonight. Uh, you never know. But I'm expecting a much better uh, effort from the Bruins. It was there in the first period. Don't forget, they could have been up 2-3-0. Uh, had some of those chances been buried, it would have been a whole different game. Uh, they just got to get the puck on net. Make life difficult for Sergei Bobrovsky and like Pasta showed in game two, prove that they will not be pushed around. I'll try to jump on tomorrow and do a bonus episode between game between games three and four. And then we'll of course be back on Monday with a full recap of all the action and all the latest on the black and gold, because this is the locked on Boston Bruins podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your favorite team every single day. Please do take care of yourselves, friends. Take care of each other. Happy Mother's Day. And uh, we'll talk to you again here on the next episode of Locked On Boston Bruins.